Insurance for gun owners being considered at the state capitol. The Democratic bill cleared its first hurdle tonight, passing out of a House committee. The state of Colorado attempts to make a constitutional right unaffordable. Welcome to another installment of the Connecticut Gun Bench. Today's video is brought to you by PAN Firearms, LLC. PAN Firearms, your NRA certification of multifaceted gun training. You can reach us at 203-300-6343 or use our website at www.panfirearmsllc.com. As always, there'll be a link in the description box below. And if you like channel, like content, what I do here, you can support me. The link, everything is appreciated. And to my Connecticut residents, if you plan on getting your Connecticut pistol permit, please get that training done. And I will go further and say, turn your paperwork in before July 1st, because then after that, the training is going to get longer, harder, and depending on your instructor, more expensive. For those of you who have your permit, watch the expiration date. Don't let it expire. There's a link to the online renewal portal for the state of Connecticut for pistol permits in the description box. Keep an eye on that. Let's talk about this. Now, state of Colorado is once again creating more hurdles for legal gun ownership in the state. And now they're going at it from a financial perspective. What they're proposing is a liability insurance policy separate from any, you know, your home owner's policy and what have you, where if somebody is injured by a negligent discharge on your property, then that insurance would cover that injury. Now I have a lot to say about that, but I want to give you all the information. Live outside the Capitol and Talk to both sides of uh, people on this bill, and Collette, it just narrowly passed tonight. Guys, it was a six to five vote out of committee for House Bill 1270. If it became law, it would require gun owners to ensure their firearms, that coverage already available through home or renter's insurance policies. Now, sponsors of the bill say it will help protect people when accidental shootings happen. Claims could be filed for medical expenses or monetary damages. Policyholders would be protected from the claims if their gun was stolen and they report it. Those in support of the bill compared it to car insurance and say it'll increase responsible gun ownership here in Colorado. But those against it say it's one more financial challenge to owning a gun. We know that for existing policies, it, it's only about $50. And so there are protections for folks that can't afford it, but are responsible gun owners and that they, they, they have proven that. Um, and so we've created avenues to make sure that, again, we are not impeding on anyone's constitutional rights, but making sure that we are um, creating guardrails for responsible gun ownership. I think this is a long, large-scale plan of all this stuff coming together in one way or another to keep firearm owners from wanting to or even legally being able to obtain and own firearms. That was Representative Ryan Armagost. He's also concerned people wouldn't follow this law if it did become law. Now, a first violation would cost a minimum of $500. The next step for House Bill 1270 is the Committee of the Whole. Live Let's come into here. Okay, insurance bill advances in Colorado. Now, I'm going to jump right down to the guts of this. Because remember, Colorado is also pushing for an assault weapons ban, but that's a whole other thing. But this here is definitely something different. But a bill that would require liability insurance for all firearms is moving forward in the Colorado State Legislature. The legislation, House Bill 24-1270, would require gun owners in the state to maintain a liability insurance policy that covers losses or damages to a person other than the policyholder who is injured on the insured property as a result of any accidental or unintentional discharge of the firearm. The bill passed out of the House Business Affairs and Labor Committee on Thursday with a 6-5 vote. According to a report by local news affiliate Denver 7, under the bill, victims of accidental shootings could file a claim against the policyholder of the gun. The bill sponsor said that in the event a person is shot with a stolen gun, the policyholder would be protected from any potential claims as long as the gun had previously been reported as stolen. What if you're out of town and your gun is stolen? What if you don't know? 
that your gun has been stolen. If somebody broke into a safe that you have and stole your gun and you don't know and somebody gets shot with that firearm. I'm going to get deeper into that. But, quote, what we're really trying to do is make sure that we are just taking responsible gun ownership and adding one more protection. Democrat State Rep Iman Jode, one of the bill sponsors, told Denver 7. People own guns. We do not want to infringe on that right. But what we want to do is make sure they are protecting themselves even more. And so by having this insurance, we are upholding their belief that they should own guns. They have the right to own guns and that they can be and should be responsible gun owners. Let's come out of that poppycock nonsense right here. Now, injuries from negligent discharges are not an epidemic. They are not a problem. But you're forcing somebody to spend money on an insurance policy for an ideal that rarely happens. So what is this about? It's about making another layer of problems for somebody to exercise a constitutional right. You now must go get insurance on top of not only purchasing your gun and going through all the rigmarole that you have to, now you got another added layer of financial responsibility to exercise a constitutional right. This is a bunch of crap. It's not going to change anything. Once again, I will reread this line. The bill sponsor said that in the event a person is shot with a stolen gun, the policyholder would be protected from any potential claims as long as the gun had previously been reported as stolen. Do you not see the angle they're playing there? Of course. What if you didn't know that the gun was stolen? How It happens. Some people have two, three safes full of guns and some, they don't always go into them. Something gets stolen, you might not realize it for weeks. It's always that possibility. But this is leaving them open, liable for any criminal action done with that firearm. Like I said, what if you're out of town? You're out of town for two weeks, somebody breaks into your home, steals the guns. They go out immediately and get, get into some shenanigans and kill somebody with it. Well, you didn't report it as stolen. Now your policy is going to have to cover that. And what underwriter is going to cover this? What underwriter is going to create a policy for this? How much is it going to cost? This is an affront to the Constitution because, once again, you're creating class. The rich don't have to worry about this because they can afford this. The poor have to worry about this. The Constitution starts off with we the people, not those with wealth and those without. This is just exactly what this thing is right here, is to create a level of bureaucracy to force people who cannot afford it to not be allowed to own a gun. That's what this is. They say, oh no, it's to make people safer for an incident that doesn't that happen so rarely. Now you have to pay for this policy every year. A policy that once again, Who's going to write this up? Who's going to give you this policy? How much is it going to cost you? This is once again, just another step in the attack on the second amendment, but they're doing it from a financial aspect because this is going to hurt those who have meager means. It's not gonna hurt the rich. It, and it's damn sure, I guarantee you, they're going to exempt the people who protect them. I'm talking about these elitists. I'm talking about these legislatures and all these people, they're going to exempt the people who protect them. Guarantee it. I guarantee this bill is going to basically be worded in that way as they have done every single time. Every assault weapons ban and every magazine ban exempts the people who protect the politicians. Every time. Same thing here. But I hope the people in Colorado, you're, you're calling your, your reps and doing what needs, this needs to be a grassroots effort once again, because this is not about your safety. Like I said, negligent discharges are very rare, very rare. So why do you need a whole policy just for you at your home? Something might go down, bunch of nonsense. So Coloradans, you got to step up, jump up, get on the phones because you don't need this. Okay, you don't need it. But let me know what you think. As always, you can leave your comments in the comment section below. And as always, any statements of violence, the statements that lead to violence will be removed. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you're notified the next time a video goes live. I will see you on the next one.
Peace.